Hello, my name is Carol May Whittick and welcome to Her Conversations, Tools for the Awakening Woman. HER is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. This is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. Who is the Awakening Woman? She's a woman who's seeking a greater possibility in her reality and looking for solutions. She knows being awakened is not a lofty ideal but a necessity. If she can transform herself, she can change the world. Her conversations will introduce you to talented women who will speak to your spirituality, sensuality, soul. They share their stories and explain how they are in service to the world. So let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. A year ago today I published the first full episode of Her Conversations and my guest was Alexis Jones. To mark the occasion I asked her to come back so that we can talk about how our lives have changed over the past 12 months. I've always known Alexis as a psychic medium and have experienced her insightful and frank readings. I also know that she wanted to make changes in her work and business. So during our conversation, we talk about what 2018 has meant for us, manifesting your life, being yourself in a world that's threatened by difference and the everyday reality of choosing your own path. We also talk about why Cardi B represents her and her own special message for me. But as always, I ask my guests, her is an acronym for higher energetic resonance. When do you feel at your most her? Um, connecting, connecting to the femme divine, to the mother. Uh, some people say Mother Mary. Some people say Mother Earth. Some people say it's the moon energy, but just the femme divine energy. I, I, I find that she has um, found me this year, which, which I think is in alignment to everything that the femme divine energy is returning. But I, I really feel that's probably been the connecting with her in my heart inside mm-hmm. and um, focusing on certain visuals. It, it, long story short, the femme divine energy, that's where I've, I'm finding that her resonance hundred mm. percent ironically, right? A G R. Yeah. I am. I am. Yeah. And, um, like I said before, the reason that I wanted to speak to you again is like you were the first guest that I had on the podcast last year. And we've, we've got history before that anyway. Um, and I just wanted to find out from you what, how, how this year has treated you, what's changed for you because I know I know how I'm feeling about it and we spoke a little bit off of recording about it but speak about your year (laughs) this has been one of my it it was a tough year um I, I I honestly feel like every year I've been on earth has been tough to be honest but this was interesting because it was the first year I would say that I was going through, I would say depression, like if I'm being honest Mm. and, and what I call soul diving, doing the readings and, and just putting that aside. I I think I've honestly been putting my own feelings aside for a couple of years, but I feel like this year it became very evident to me how much I neglected myself Mm. and honored myself. Um, in the bigger scheme of trying to help others. And um, so, yeah, it was, it's been an emotionally draining year, but what, what my guides, you know, it sounds schizophrenic because I'm always having these conversations in my head (laughs) with my guides or with ancestors or with people that are past, but um, you know, obviously I've I've done enough work in my life to know that these are real conversations. Mm -hmm. So I trust, I trust the process. And something that my guides were were kind of telling me is, you know, you don't have to like martyr yourself and 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 feel like you need to be the savior of people because you have these abilities. You know, it, it, if anything, and, I, and that's why I want to stay away from the word psychic and I, and I want to use the word abilities more. Um, yeah, I, I try not to even say gifts because I feel like these are abilities. These are abilities that we all actually have. Truth be told, it's just because of maybe my past lives or my soul or whatever that in this particular life, I'm so proficient. Mm -hmm. um, But, but what my guys are basically saying is you don't have to sacrifice yourself basically for other people. Cause that's what it was starting to feel like. 
And no, you know, and, and that's not coming from a place of ego and saying, oh, I'm, I'm so accurate. I have to do all these readings. It, it wasn't about that. It was, I lived a whole life feeling lost, right? I've had like a million jobs. I've done a million things. So when I went through the whole process, this in the first episode of how I got here, mm -hmm. I felt like, oh, okay, so this is it. This is why I'm here. This is what I'm supposed to do. So I, I really believed I'm supposed to do readings. It doesn't matter how I feel about it. This is my gift and people are supposed to be doing their gifts. Um, because it, I mean, clearly it's something that I'm good at. It's, it's it, by the grace of God. Um, but it was like equally killing me. That's how it, you know, it feels because I'm not a regular reader. I'm not someone that just observes people or reads cards from a place of observation. I am feeling the five senses on a, in, an intuitive level. So I feel people, I'm hearing things. I'm, I'm completely, I call it soul diving because I'm completely emerged and invested. Um, and then I'm channeling at that, which requires so much energy. I'm actually turning gray. Like you can, you know, you can see, I have like, I don't know if you can see it, but I have gray patches. Oh, I mean, I'm, but the point being is it, I just, I realized this year that you, you called me confident or brave or something. It's actually the most scariest decision to say, you know, I don't, I can't do read. It was not even like I, I, I it's like I can't do these readings. It's, it's mm -hmm. killing me. It feels like, um, and no, no one was doing that to me. That was me doing that to myself, meaning I don't honor myself. And I, I, and I, and that was what was revealing for me this year. And I always learn from doing readings. I always see people's perspectives. And one of the things that I, I guess gave me permission or made me feel like it's okay, because I was seeing that in, in reading after reading, other people's guides giving people's permission to say, you know what? you're feeling this way because this isn't for you anymore. And that's okay. Change, mm -hmm. you know, it's like dying and rebirth. That's what change is. And I think that's what this year has been for everybody on a emotional, intuitive, spiritual, multidimensional level. We're all being put in these positions where we're dying and re being reborn over and over and over again. And that's mm -hmm. scary to keep facing change, like back to back to back to back to back to back on top of, the world and then the world. So we're witnessing changes and then we're changing and then like people next to us are changing. And it's, so it's, 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 a lot, it's intense. Mm -hmm. it's an intense I hear you on every single level on that as well, that I've just felt the change, the change, the change. It's been you know, I, where I thought, okay, I've made a decision now. I've, I've changed something. I've, I've kind of left a job, a situation that's not working out for me anymore. And I, I was kind of forced out in a way as well. And I was forced out, not that someone came up to me and went leave, but the situation got to the point where I had to face myself and go, if you respect yourself, <laughs> you will do what is right in this situation. Because if you stay here, then you're not, you're not showing yourself any kind, like you're saying to yourself, the self-love, the self-respect, you have to kind of go, I'm sorry, but you can't continue to do that for me anymore after I've given you X amount of my energy and time and faithfulness and all of these kind of things. I saw everyone was going through this, you yeah. know, constantly. It's like, what the, what's going on? What do you want to do? It's like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think that was like a lot of what was happening uh, most of the year, though, for mm. sure. That's mm. just that back and forth in my mind of, see, because you got to understand for me, this is my destiny. When I say this is my destiny, I'm not talking about doing psychic readings. I, I mean, in the sense of, I don't recall ever not being this way, meaning I've always known, I guess, a little bit more than the average Joe. Let me put it this way. Now I want to say I've known a little bit more. The, the best uh, analogy my guys gave me to help me understand what was going on is I, I live in a town full of people that are blind and I can see the sky and I've been trying to explain what the sky looks like to people my whole life and so they think I'm crazy because again imagine if you're blind and someone's trying to describe the sky to you you'll be like what what that's all <laughs> on my head nah you're bugging you know what I mean so it's like it's it's not about knowing more I, I just want to say I've, I've experienced a different perception of reality mm -hmm. that's what I want to say than other people 
So when I say it's my destiny, I mean more so I wouldn't be made this way if for no reason I don't believe. And when I realized like, okay, uh, I can't do readings like the rest of my life. Sometimes I feel like I can't even do a reading another a, a day, much less like my life. I was constantly questioning God and questioning my guides and, and questioning myself. Like, well, what can I do? Because I'm not a regular person. Meaning I can't go back out into the world and do a nine to five job. And that's not from a place of superiority or, or you know, no, I'm not going to do that because I, I totally understand the value of a dollar, the value of hard work. But I also feel like there's a lane for everybody here. Everybody here is meant to walk their own path. And I don't feel my path, because I've tried that path my whole life, that the re- I call it the regular path, the human path, the surface level path. That's not for And now that spirituality has become an industry, and once things become industrialized, it's almost like tainted with Big Brother. It's seeping in with Matrix agents. It's, you know, it's an industry now. Mm -hmm. I felt like like what I was saying um, before we we started recording is, you know, in the middle of two worlds. I, I, I struggled because I didn't feel like I fit with regular people, quote unquote, and I felt like I didn't fit in the spiritual industry. Mm -hmm. I don't say the spiritual people, I'm gonna say in the spiritual industry. Uh, because we're talking about working, life, living, mm. and 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 that was that was where the fear and my depression, I think, activated. And I think that, and I'm saying this so openly because if anybody is going through this internally, because these are thoughts that are hard to share with other people for them to understand, mm-hmm. feeling like stuck, you know, literally in your mind, even not even just in your physical life, but in your mind, like I don't know to go left or right, because I've tried left and I've tried right. So what, I need a new direction, you know? Is it is it northwest right, up, <laughs> side? <laughs> so that, that's when, um, that's when, when I started, when I started emotionally breaking down through that, I started working with, remember when I said earlier, um, the, the femme divine kind of showed herself to me? Mm-hmm. Um, I have some type of vision. I don't want to go into it, but I have some type of vision. I feel like of like the mother Mary or like a motherly God type of vibration. And I felt like, look for me, look for me. So I was just like, I Googled like mother Mary Oracle cards, even though, you know, it's not about Oracle cards. It was just something that moved in my spirit. And I found these cards, mother Mary Oracle by Alana Fairchild. And, and I, I never buy cards without uh, looking for imagery. What I loved about the imagery of these cards were these women are, were women of color. It was artistically painted, but they're women of color, mm-hmm. all colors. And that's something you rarely see in tarot cards or oracle cards. Um, angels and, and, and spiritual beings are depicted as, you know, sometimes a predominant uh, race. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll just get them, you know, just to get them. I don't give myself readings, but I, again, I just kind of, something was moving through me. And when I got those cards, again, it's not about the cards. The woman herself that wrote them, she channels. And that's something that I always respect. Not the industry. No shade to Doreen Virtue, but she's she's actually not even psychic. She's just studying angels. Mm. This woman fully channels. This is her life. This is her life. This is her life before she wrote these books. And I found that the the words in these cards, the words and the meanings of the books, I I mean, I would cry. I would pull a card and it would match literally what was going on with me. And I don't want it to be about the cards. Please don't hear about cards. I just, it's more about how the the feminine divine energy found me because Mm -hmm. after that, I started realizing about being a conscious creator. Mm -hmm. That's when she started to remind me who I was about, about who we are as women. We're literally creators. We are, we are divine Mm. and this is a man's world and it's been run in that way, which is why we have lost balance. I mean, this is, these are the things, this is what she's telling me and showing me because I'm very aggressive. I have very alpha energy. I'm an Aries, you know, I'm a dominant person. So I don't have that feminine divine goddess flow, but I'm, I feel like she's introducing me Mm. to that. And and it was through the introduction of, of, of that that began chiseling away at um, my anger for feeling stuck or feeling like I have to do these readings because I can't have a job and, you know. So that was the beginning of the shift for me 
in the middle of the year or no, I'll say in the beginning of the summer. That's where things shifted for me. Mm. You notice with all psychics, we all step away at some point because it's a lot. It's a lot dealing with human beings, man. We, we, we got a lot going on. And I say we, because it's me too. And so when you talking to people one-on-one and, or people are looking to you like you have all the answers. No, I'm channeling the answers. I'm actually in this boat with you, right? I just happen to have the telephone mm. to, 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 somewhere, to someone that can give us directions. I'm in the boat with you guys though. And that gives me goosebumps saying that because that's, that's, that's the reality of it for me. I'm with y'all and I'm not trying to be effed up either. You know what I mean? But if I stay on the phone in the boat, like this is, this is the visual, this is the visual I, I guess I can give you is, um, is like the Titanic, you know? And, and if, and if I, if I have the, the, the heads up that what's going to happen is going to happen. I've been spending my life trying to tell people, you know, like, Hey, you're this, Hey, da, 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 Hey, but at some point, when am I going to get off the boat? Mm-hmm. Right. Because I, I got the message too, that I'm trying to tell y'all. And I think that the, the truth is what something my guys even told me today is because, again, this is a daily, I, I still ask, is that the right thing? Was that, right? Because this is my livelihood. That was like my business. Mm. And again, they, were, they, they said to me, you, you're not here to save everybody. You're here to save yourself. That's everybody's end game. Because see, us being here, this is what they said, us being here, we're rubbing each other. We're affecting each other. Regardless, whether I do readings or not, I'm affecting people with my presence, with just in this conversation we're having. We're affecting people. That's how, so it's like, you don't have to feel like you ha- have to save anybody besides yourself. Because once you start doing that, people see that. Mm-hmm. It's a domino effect. Kind of like be the change you want to see, but just on a, on a more deeper level of no it's really okay to save yourself type of thing like it's okay it's not selfish and that's the and that's the big thing isn't it the the fact that the selfishness or the fear of just because you're doing for yourself you're not doing for anyone and there's this phrase that always comes around where people go oh you think you're the center of the universe but it's like but you are though (laughs) <laughs> if you right. if you stand and in you, my turn, world, I sh- <laughs> you stand and you do a th- if you turn around you're smack, smack, smack bang in the middle of it so right. you are the center of the universe and like you say if you change yourself then it's gonna because I've I've noticed by me not doing anything other than just put my head down and deal with my own shit the the way that p- people that I was having a little bit of tension with or it just felt a little bit odd it's just they've turned up and they've been nice and concerned and everything and I've not done anything and definitely not gone out of my way to contact them because mm-hmm. the last time we left it it was kind of icky and yet it's like hi how are you doing it's like you know and you're like you're kind of like how did that happen because yeah. I've not done anything I've just if anything I've just kind of kept away because it was all a bit weird you know so it, it's interesting seeing it when you just stop trying to save everyone and you're just like really really working on yourself how people just come to you with a different a different bag that's that's a a lot of the things that I've noticed as well life molds around you and and um you know that's actually a good segue to what clicked for me with with beginning to manifest things and and trying to focus on like what I say is hacking the matrix because I I had a really dark moment. Um, I think for anyone that's ever battled with depression, let me just say this, and with mental health, because um, I don't. I, I think I mentioned in the first interview I had, I had suffered with mental health issues when I was younger, not you know knowing what was going on with me. But I think anyone that's experienced depression once knows that it's it's stalking you pretty much the rest of your life. No matter how much you have it at bay, no matter how happy you can be, or how much, it's always there. And what I always say to people, it's it's not about feeling bad if it ever creeps back up on you. It's just about, it's almost like, don't, don't sit in a darkness, right? It, feel it on you like, oh, I'm in that dark place again. And then do what you can to get out. But it's, I think it's always going to 
be there. And I, and I just say that so that people don't feel guilty whenever they have these breakdowns or these moments that make them feel like, oh my God, now I'm reverting backwards. No, that's the that's the death and rebirth cycle, right? It's the it's the mirror. It's being it's it's looking at that shadow, that part of you that you tuck down. That oh my God, it's pretty back up, and it's okay. But I had but anyway, I had one of these moments where it was dark. I was in the darkness in my mind, and I was really frustrated. I really asked God in my my. I'm saying this in the most like politically correct way, but I, I cursed them out. Like I really cursed God out. Like yo, what's why do you have me going through torture? Because that's how it felt. And this is not about readings. This is just like my life being this way, being me, earth, this complex. So just, just like, just the whole everything. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, if my opinion matters, God, this is my opinion. That's kind of where I was at with it. Like, <laughs> this is like not a dope place to be. And, you know, you want us to shine light and it's like, it's hard. I need help help me. <laughs> so that's kind of where that was at. And my guys, they, I got to be honest, they kept it real, you know, like the way I keep it real readings, they keep it real with me. And it was like, Alexis, you know, you can talk to dead people, you know, you can talk to us. You mean to tell me you can't, you can't, you can't vibrate with the frequency of money or you can't vibrate with the frequency of happiness. Cause if you can tap, tap into the frequency of someone's loved one that passed away, or if you can tap into the frequency of how someone feels in a whole nother country, right? And you're not even around them. You can definitely tap into the frequency of other things. Mm. And I was like, all right, I mean, it's, that's a fair assessment. Mm-hmm. And it kind of led me into looking at like quantum, quantum physics and quantum mechanics, not to sound crazy, but it was like, it kind of just made me realize like, okay, everything is frequency. I know this. Like, see, I know these things. I channel these things every day for people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, but I'm being a human being. I'm not, I'm not applying what I know. And I had to really think about that. Okay, if I know everything, and they, they reminded me, say, you're you're an alchemist. You see, this is this is something that they were saying to me. And again, I'm not saying this for a place of arrogancy, I don't know. But they were like, you know, you've done this in many lives. That's the reason why you're so good at it in this life. Anytime anyone is proficient in something is because you've been doing it. You've done it before. Mm-hmm. Practice the soul. Everything, everything in nature is real, is true. So uh, like practice makes perfect. Repetitiveness, hypnotic rhythm. When you muscle memory, right, is what I'm saying. When you do something enough, muscle memory, it becomes second nature. You don't even have to think about it anymore. Singers, right? You sing, you've been singing. Your soul been singing. That's why you was born able to say it's natural to you. So they're like, you're an alchemist. I appreciate this, whatever. But it's not seer, whatever word, right? But you've done this. You do this. Don't let this society frame, this matrix, this false reality seep into your mind and, and have you forget that you are a conscious creator. This is why I'm starting to use that word a lot more because that's where it came from, right? This is the conversation my guys had with me after I cursed them out. So I'm like, okay. And they're like, you know, I knew I had to, I knew these things, but I knew that for me to really understand these things, I had to, I had to see the science behind it. Mm. My mind, see, your mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's fake. It doesn't. It's a, it's a, it's literally a quantum computer. We are the coders. But if, if we do not know that someone else is typing the code, meaning like what we see on TV or when people feel like they don't have any options or what it, it's, it's, you either are participating or it's being done for you, that type of thing. So when I started looking at quantum physics and quantum mechanics, I started realizing, okay, this is science. This is not, this is not, this is not like just in the dimension of spirit. This is, no, if you do certain experiments, you can see how creation creates. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I would just say to everyone listening to kind of research the double slit experiment. I can't communicate it in words how it works because I just suck with that. <laughs> but that's that was the thing that got me realizing, like, wait a minute, the universe literally will bend around your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Fact. And when I when I really began to realize, no, this is a fact. I started watching manifest videos, and I'm not talking about law of attraction or the secret. Those are um, I don't want to say introductory videos. That's not fair to say. I feel like I was, I was past that. I needed, I needed, 
I need it. I see. I, I talk in a real sense. I need people to be real. Talk to me real. Don't don't sell me the law of attraction. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when I really started going down the YouTube rabbit hole, we have all been down. <laughs> um, I started applying the techniques. I started work. That was another thing. I started working with water. Right. Water is completely programmable. Water is literally a portal. This is why on some real deep shit. We are grown in water inside of our parents. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? This is why there is a whole living ecosystem under water. Water is life. And not only is water life, it is completely programmable. And not only is it completely programmable, we are mostly made of water. We are also magnets, right? This is the science. See, once you understand the science behind this shit, your mind will get on board. You see, you can't trick your mind. People be trying to trick their mind, but your mind, it, it works for you. So if you've already programmed your mind, meaning um, the way you think, right? So if you already feel like that's bullshit, I don't care if you decided to wake up to say and say, okay, I, I, I feel like that's not bullshit. Your mind is going to be like, no, it is. Because this is how you, pro this is your program. You're programmed not to believe in these kind of things. So that's why I had to go into the science because I know spiritual stuff. I'm a medium, but I'm living in the physical world. I needed, I needed, I needed my mind to get on board with the physical part. Do you get what I'm saying? That's why I, I, I for me, with the, the beginning route to manifesting, I had to understand how does that work? How? Don't channel to me because it does. No, how? <laughs> your mind has been programmed your whole entire life. It is literally projecting out your reality. So your mind is like, if you've ever done a website and, and you wanted to change something on your website, you would know that it, it actually starts in the code. And the, when you change it in the code, it actually changes the appearance of the website. It's all in the code. So your mind is coding and the website is like basically your reality. I had to change the code of my mind. So I already know. I get it. I get it. I get it. I believe. I I. I talk, again, I've witnessed miracles. So you don't have to convince me. If, if my guy say something's real, I'm sold. That's the only reason why I've gotten this far doing readings. Because I trust my guys more than human beings. But Alexis's mind, when it comes to Alexis's life, has always experienced um, bad luck depression, uh, bullying, just all of these negative things. So to get my mind to believe that I can just go into the frequency of money or go into the frequency of happiness, nah, it was going to need some convincing. It was going to need some, because everything that I have experienced as Alexis, it doesn't match that. Mm. See, my soul doesn't match my person. That's the problem. I feel like I'm two different people. My physical body is, is, is like my clients, right? But my soul is like, oh no, you got to do this and do this. Does that make sense? I just sound schizophrenic. Like, so it was like, I was like one of my clients. So it was like, it sounds so weird. It's like, I know, but my mind didn't know. My mind needed to get on board with, with my soul. Mm. And when I, and what, again, what did it for me was the, was water. Because that was simple. That was easy. That's like, okay. And then when I started seeing the, um, I think his name is Dr. Amato. I had already seen his experiments. I had already knew who he was. But again, like most of us know, when you read a book, maybe the fifth time, you start to realize like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, now I really, really, had, you know, I was like, okay, that was cool. When I first saw the experience, I'm like, oh, that's cool. You talk to him. But now in, in understanding that I am a conscious creator, mm -hmm. that I can bend reality Understanding that water was programmable, that shit is revolutionary. Because once you drink that water that you've just programmed, you're putting that inside of you, which is mostly water. Mm. You are also a magnet. It literally shifts everything. And in a month, I manifested so many things that it became, that, that I had worked for my whole life that I couldn't get. I have been trying to travel my whole life. That is honestly the only thing I want to do. You know that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything else but travel and like be, help people if I could. And I haven't been able to leave. You would think that I've traveled the world the way you have, you know, that's why I love seeing my clients listen to me, but I don't listen to me. 
I said, okay, well, you know what? I'm rich. I'm a multimillionaire. You know, I'm applying these techniques. I'm not talking about law of attraction and I'm saying it in a simple way, but I, 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 I basically applied certain techniques from what I was researching and my own things that my guys said to do. And so one of the main things was you have to be what you are manifesting. And that's, that's something that's hard for people to do to, if I, if I want to be a multimillionaire, how can I be a multimillionaire if I, if I feel like I'm broke and I don't have multimillions? See, and that's the challenge. You have to ignore that shit and you have to still act like it. So if let's say if I didn't have money in my bank account, I would say, okay, well, my money is tied up in investments. Mm-hmm. If I went to the casino, because I live in Vegas, uh, to gamble, which I never used to do ever because I always used to lose. Like I, I honestly had the worst. I have, I had the worst luck ever. My magnets are off. That's a whole other story. But I'm like, okay, since I'm, since I'm a multi-millionaire, let me go to the casino. Because one of the things about manifesting is you need to put yourself in the vibration of also what you want. You, you See, you can't ask for something if you're not aligned with the vibration of it. So for me, it's a lot of money. So I have to put myself in places where there's a lot of money. Um, that can be banks. That For me, it's easy the casino because I'm in Vegas. So when I go to the casino, again, your mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's fake. So I tell my mind, I'm at my bank when I'm at the casino. My mind doesn't know. Oh, yeah, this is my bank. And so when I put money in the machine, I'm making a deposit. And I'm coming here with the expectancy of making a withdrawal. I don't say winning or losing. This is where my mind was this summer in experimenting. I I don't condone like gambling. Gambling is a serious addiction, all that stuff. Girl, I started winning mini jackpots. Uh, because I kept saying I'm a jackpot winner. It wasn't like hundreds of dollars. It would be like the $30, which, which was more than what I used. I used to never win. Then what blew my mind is, so I started saying, okay, well, as a multimillionaire, what do multimillionaires do? They chart yachts, right? I'm actually afraid of boats, but I, I wanted to stay in the storyline of being a multimillionaire so my mind can begin to understand you need to, you need to recode my reality. Hmm. So I started chartering yachts. I started looking up yachts. And at first I started looking at the cheap yachts, right? Because that, that's where your mind is going to go, your budget. Girl, you can't afford, first of all, you can't afford no yacht. But if we're going to be realistic, if it is going to happen, it's going to have to be the cheapest yacht. But then I caught myself and said, well, I'm a multimillionaire. Why am I looking at the cheapest yachts that doesn't match? So I started looking at the most expensive yachts because that's my lifestyle. And I started looking at where I'd want to go and what I'd want to do. And literally for one week straight, I, I kid you not, I did that every single day. I researched um, how to um, hire a crew. I researched etiquette for a yacht because, you know, I'm from New York and Harlem. It's like, well, what, my first yacht, I don't want to, <laughs> I want to be, because, you know, I just don't want to know what I'm doing. So I really immersed myself in it. One week later, I got this in the mail. I kept it because I couldn't believe it. And it says, congratulations, you have a free cruise. This is from the casino that I had started to go to because I had never been gambling. I had signed up for a card. And it said, yeah, as long as you book by December 31st. I go online as Princess Cruises. I had my pick of two-day cruise, three-day cruise, five-day cruise, seven-day cruises, and 14-day cruises. And I said, you know what? It's free. (laughs) And I've been wanting to travel. I chose the 14-day cruise that's stopping at eight different ports. Um, it blew my mind because I realized this is the yacht, the universe to its best ability to what it had to work with in my now gave me what I kept in visualizing me on a big ass boat being served going around the Caribbean. Nothing. And once that happened, I realized I think I want to start sharing this with people. Mm-hmm. And that's how I manifested Queens Who Manifest, which, which ultimately became um, my new baby, my new business, and, 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 and what I quit doing readings for. That's how it happened. It, it was like I manifested that business. And then, and <laughs> sorry to keep going, but it ultimately that started off as, okay, well, just share. It wasn't even a business, right? It was like, well, just share what you've been going through and just share. And, and I started realizing I'm getting frustrated again because see, I go, I'm a natural teacher, but I get, as a teacher, I guess I get frustrated because the things I want to share, I feel like people don't think are important because they don't know. So you don't know what you don't know. 
Mm. So if I'm telling you like, yo, I got that sauce. So I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do. I'm getting frustrated. And I don't know how it happened. I don't remember how I got to subscription box service, how I got to um, realizing that, you know what? And I, and that's why I, I took down my, my paid classes because I don't want to have to charge people for information. I, I took down all my readings on YouTube and it was like, just talk about this freely. We'll do the rest. So I'm really operating in faith. I have to tell you, I'm completely channeling and, oper- and operating in faith. Mm. But it, 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 it's, it's the femme divine energy that, that came into my life that day that I got those cards. I'm telling you, from when I saw that vision, from my guys keeping it real with me and saying, you can link into the vibration of what you want. You just have to remember how. Um, that's the only thing that's been keeping me going. Because when I look at everything, you know, when they in the Bible, like it says, if you look left and you look right, don't look left, don't look right. You know, when you start looking at what's going on around you, it's scary because this shit is burning everywhere. So it's like, you know, your guides or God or, or universe, whatever you believe, it's telling you like, just trust me and keep going. And you're like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing all of that. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, and also because you're on that side of the water, so I'm kind of observing the whole Kavanaugh situation. Mm. Yeah, has has it feel like because you're there and you're you're on you're on that side? I'm kind of seeing little bits of it, and I'm like, what does it feel like on grand level? (laughs) My honest opinion is this is all a part of the the. The ascension process. See, what's happening is, again, the femme divine energy is coming back. Gaia's energy, earth energy, female energy is coming back. And and I apologize to anyone that's sensitive about uh, the topic of race or ethnicity, but I but I have to honor um, who I am as, a, as an African-American woman. We're in a society in the United States where, to me, it's always been, as far as hierarchy goes, white male, white woman other races in between black woman, black male. That's pretty much the scale of things. Mm. And with the whole Me Too movement and what's going on in Hollywood with um, women stepping forward, and and it's really mostly white women, uh, to, to be honest, but with women stepping forward, this trial and, and, and this man coming into because he was actually, I don't know if people know this, he was already voted to come in. They just didn't want to go forward with it fully without the extra FBI investigation. All this does is going to piss off women, yes, but mostly white women. And the reason why I'm saying about white women is because without that, see, no no man is strong without a woman. Let me just, let me, let me rewind that because I don't want you guys to think I'm making it about race. It's not about race. It's about... Um, uh, power hierarchy and the white man was strong because he had his 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 woman behind him see all men are strong because they have their women behind them pushing them giving birth to them supporting them we we do whatever from it right that's that's why we're that's why we're going to get this back balance and so the boys will be boys club has offended their women you understand? See, we already know this. We know how they are. We know, and I'm not saying they as in white people. I'm talking about men. See, black women or women of color, we know whether that's because of rape, abuse, sex, sex trafficking. Like, we know how men are. But they live lives where it's like, oh, that this doesn't happen to our community, right? This is this is this is a lower community issue. Oh no, no, no. Now this is your, now this is a, a woman issue, right? Now, because now we're having a women's, but now it's a women's issue. Mm-hmm. And so I think that even though, I mean, he's gonna, he's going to be on the Supreme Court. Like that's not, it's gonna happen. But the shift has been done now to where women of now all colors, including white, are realizing the top dogs, they're they're not they're not good. They're not doing good things. Mm. It, this is not about race. When I say who's on top, I'm saying even if it, even if it was Hispanics or blacks, because you got to understand this. If you really understand ancient history, I study ancient history. I don't study just our history. Everybody's had a turn at on top. Mm. Okay, everybody's had a turn. Let's be fair. 
God is fair. We have beautiful ruins from the African empires. We have beautiful ruins from Mexican, Mayan, Incan empires. We have beautiful ruins in the Korean, Chinese empire. Everybody's had their turn. This is just what happens during, the, this is their turn. That's all it is. And I'm saying this to keep it real with you on a soul level of what I have channeled and, and, and known. And so ultimately during this turn, and just going into turns, every society falls. It's, it's, it's a cycle. Everything is a cycle. And no one should be afraid of cycles. It's a cycle. We are at the end of a cycle. Mm. And so I know you said, well, what do you think about that one thing? And I went to other places. But I guess the moral of the stories I'm saying is this had to happen so that all women, not just women of color, but all women can begin to wake up and realize, whoa, we're letting the wrong motherfuckers run things. Men don't know what they're doing. We need to step back in as the as the creators, mm. as the fem divine energy, as the nurturers, as the ones. With, see, we're the ones with the compassion and the empathy and the understanding. So I feel like this is a trigger for them because they need to be triggered. Yeah, they, we all need to be triggered. We need triggers. This is their trigger. Everyone's like, this is a woman's issue. We women of color, all colors, I don't care if you're Korean, Asian, black, Latino, indigenous, this ain't new for us. <laughs> this is not new that you know we're being assaulted or raped or harassed and nothing happens. This is new for them. This is not new for us. It has to happen. Because this is, 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 we are living in, a, in, a, in an imbalance. Please, you guys hear me. This is not about race. This is about the, the male energy and the female energy. The yin energy, the yang energy. The plus, the minus. The up, the down. That's what I'm talking about. Polarity. So that's what I think that, that is. I think it's a, a, a trigger that's needed mm-hmm. for change. Because women are fed up. <laughs> women are like upset. And that's good. We need to be good. Stop bending for them. Mm-hmm. You know, unless, unless, and when I say them, I don't want to say all men. Of course, if you are a king, God bless you. Thank you for honoring your queen. I'm talking about our, uh, the society that's being run. You know, I'm talking about like, again, bigger, bigger, bigger stuff, the bigger picture, the, 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 the aggressive energy that's been running things. It's just, it's too aggressive. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a trigger. That's all. <laughs> See, I told you, I don't know how to like talk about something without it, without taking it 50 layers deep down the rabbit hole. But that's the way that every, everything is, everything is everything though, isn't it really? Nothing is just one thing. It's, yeah. it's, it's connected to so many different things. And, and like you say, with, it's just interesting to see women speak about things now and even, um, from the little bits that I've seen of what's happening in America in particular, the way that it's, it's not even about the parties anymore. It's, it's about just looking at the bad, be- the shocking, yeah. the shocking behavior of what's been allowed and what's been put up with. And like you're saying the uncovering as well, because there's been so many secrets, so much shadow with all of us. And I think with, especially, you know, with her, it it has kind of re-triggered everyone on a level because they're realizing, especially women, they're realizing that it's happened. It will have happened to them like three, four times in their it's lives on, on on different levels. And and now you're realizing, hang on, that was an acceptable behavior, but I just kind of let it slide because it would have been just more than enough trouble to, to, to who who am I going to tell? That's yeah. why it's called me too, because women are starting to realize, like, what me too? Yeah, well, me too. Wait. Mm-hmm. That happened to me too. And it's like, it's, wait, so that means it's been happening to all of us. And we've been keeping this secret. You see the trigger, because now that everybody's talking about it, we all realize, no, this is a problem then. Because I thought this was just me. Oh no, men are, but this is not all men. But this is a problem. And that goes into man, can I just, Cross the street into why the name Queens Who Manifest and where that even came from. Mm, yeah, too. In alignment with this conversation because 
again, when manifesting, you have to be the thing you're manifesting, right? So I, I, I started this other account on Instagram just solely so that I can follow all things that I, I, I want or that I'm into, you know, travel, because my, my main account is, is like people I know and esoteric stuff. So, you know, just it's stuff like that. And one thing I noticed about the luxury world is that women were an accessory. Mm. We're, the, we're one of the luxuries of having money. I didn't see any women. I mean, I saw some women successful. But mostly it, it, it was a very male dominated world. Like if you just look up millionaire accounts or billionaire accounts or men, it's men. And I didn't like that again, because, you know, I'm working with the femme divine energy and I'm starting to realize like, wait, I'm a one. And I, and I started to realize like, no, this is a problem. We are not their prize. We should not be bending and, and, and literally cutting ourselves up and depressed about our body for, for them. And when I say for them, I just mean, I mean, even humans for each other. Cause it sounds like I hate men. It's not about a men thing. It's a, just on a humanity level, we need to a begin to realize we all don't know what's going on. So stop living for another person. Let me just first say that as far as the dynamic between men and women, I find that most women are usually working for the attention of a man, the affection of a man, or the love of a man, as if we should be working for that. No, 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 no. I gave birth to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, not the guy I would say I want to date, but conceptually, humanity. We are the, we are, we give birth to people. We are earth in human form. These are our kids. Running around, you know, you know, when we say like when a kid is cursing out their parent, we're like, oh no, it can never be us. But you, but that's what you're doing. You're letting the kid dictate to you, meaning a male who, who's, who's aggressive, who don't have no kind of emotional balance. Why are you letting this person run you when you know like you're the divine energy of, of compassion? And then you need to infuse it into this person. Why am I working for your attention? You off, bro. So that's what I started to realize like, you know, there's not enough women and we're queens. Um, manifesting, consciously creating, contributing. If and I got that from Queen of Four too, and you know I always recommend this book, Sacred Woman. Like this is my Bible. This is what she talks about in here as well. Is that Earth is really off because we've lost femme divine energy. We there was a time in ancient history where the men honored women. You know, before war, they they would ask the women to pray over them. They would ask the women to feed them. I mean, they did, it was balance. This is in the Quran. This is in the Bible. This is in the Torah. This is in any major religious work. Do not listen to just people that have read it and then tell you. Read it yourself and you will see in all of these books, it talks about balance. There is no book that exists that says the man is supposed to dominate the woman. That is a human interpretation. I've read these books with my own eyes. Balance. Earth is about balance. Mm. So that's where Queens Who Manifest came from. It was realizing... Um, there's not enough queens manifesting. There's not enough queens in luxury. There's not enough women that believe in themselves. I'm one of these women. I was one of these women. I'm working out through being one of these women every day. Mm. It's not enough of us, but that's a part of the ascension. That's the awakening that's happening. That's the Me Too movement. That's what's happening. Again, right now it looks like, okay, men are still winning in power. I'm talking about in power. I'm talking about the rapists and the, um, the dominators. I'm not talking about the average guy. And I feel like that's, no, there's a shift happening. It's uncomfortable and it's dirty and it's, it's depressing and it's sad and it's full of rage and it's scary. It's a you know, it's a shadow. It's not a good time. But neither is childbirth. But once it's done, mm. you have something really beautiful that comes out of it. I'm looking forward to that part. I can tell you that. I feel like right now we're in labor, like they say in the Bible, right? The, like a woman travailing in labor. Mm. This is what's... <laughs> I don't want to go down that far, but that's what's going on. And that's, that's where Queens Who Manifest came from. It's good. It's going to work. I'm excited to watch it grow for you. Thank you. And see where it goes. I appreciate you. And I'm, I'm excited to see where her goes, you know, congratulations to making it a year. Um, Mm. I've just watched you just touch so many lives, whether you are conscious (laughs) of that or not. You have inspired me um, so much. I, I'm planning on going to India. 
um, in March because of you. I started a GoFundMe last year and I raised like a thousand dollars toward that trip. And that that was honestly because you got up and you went and you and you did it. So I just I just need you to know that you inspire so many people and so many women, and you are a part of this movement, whether you know it or not. To um, even even just the what her stands for, it's in alignment, right? Of of a bigger of a bigger vibration that's trying to be anchored into our reality. And, uh, and it's, and it's tough. Like Shade says, it's being a soldier of love, you know, it's, 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 it's not easy life, mm. but, you, but I thank you for your service because I know it's tough girlfriend. I know <laughs> it, thank it, you. <laughs> we look like we're all confident and fearless. Meanwhile, inside we're just like, Oh my God. And you guys, <laughs> okay. It's a, it's it's interesting it's interesting work because it's one of those things that the whole kind of her idea that that little her thing the high energetic resonance I that came in years before when I was shooting the video for for that music video that's where that came from and I didn't really know what I was going to do with it you know and it, I've I've been writing a book and putting that book together and not really not really focusing and pushing it out that much. And it was like a, a year ago that I had the idea for the podcast to then go forward. And, and like you say, you, you know, you keep putting these things out and it looks glossy, but behind you're, you're like the swan on the river, you know, you glide, it glides on the top and underneath it's just like the, the wheels are turning. And sometimes I'm like, do you know what? I, I am tired, but I want to put out another one. And even, especially over this year and this summer, I mean, earlier this year when things were like moving all over the place, I just had to sit for a couple of months and not put anything out, which really frustrated me because I wanted to be consistent. But especially over the past like two summer, especially the summer and August and all that was going on up and around us, it's putting a podcast out every week is just it just kept me going it had like when everything all around me was like literally like crumbling and changing I'm like I need to get another podcast out I need to put it out next week and just with Mars and Pluto and Saturn and you know that that it was like planetarily alignments were happening this summer right like it was there was a lot going on this summer in the skies I felt it you're not the only one that felt how you felt yeah this summer was lit <laughs> yeah one thing and one thing I will say is like every it'll be like at least once a week I will get either Instagram message or a message on Facebook or YouTube or an email someone just coming back and just saying I'm enjoying it and it's just that one that little one message sometime is enough for me to go okay it's worth it you know because it's there's part of me going well it should be this and I should be getting x amount and should you know it should 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 but it's that one person that actually takes the time to send that message in that just keeps you like okay someone's getting something out of this right I felt that with my YouTube I, I hated that um the most uh watched videos were the pick a card readings mm. uh you know, which is what it sounds like. It was, you know, pick a card and it was pretty much a reading. I mean, I'm, I, one video had about um, 50,000 views. But when I did a video about like something I was really passionate about and channeling and just felt like was important, 100 views, 137 views. And I was getting, I, I mean, it made me angry. I, 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 I deal with anger. Like, <laughs> with humanity, that's like one of my things that I'm learning about um, to, to release. And my guys basically, you know, brought one person to me. She had a reading and it was like an epic reading. And I channeled her mom. Her mom had showed me she was in a field of daisies. And then she sent me a picture of her mom young in a field of daisies. Like, it was just dope. And I was like, and I never asked people. But something made me ask her, how did you find me? And she said that she had seen one of my videos. And the particular video that she saw that made her reach out to get a reading was the one that had like a hundred views. Mm. And that... When I say that really tough, because again, I have been just angry, right? Over the fact like, oh, everybody loves these pick of cards and that's not even like me, right? That's just me doing what they want me to do because that's what they're into. But I want, so to know that this epic reading that I know is life changing for her only happened because she saw the video that I was so angry that no one quote unquote watches. Mm -hmm. 
So that's like that one person that texts you or say, you know, it's like, maybe we're not changing a hundred people's lives, but yo, if you're changing one, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal, you know? And then just, it just humbles you again. And, 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 but then again, this then that then line of like, okay, I'll do it, but you also want to feed your soul. And that's, I think that's the balance in the conversation everyone's having in their head between duty and honoring themselves and like the middle ground, you know, because you were tired. And so even though, yeah, people are resonating with you, you can take a break or you can switch it up or you could do something different because regardless that one episode is out and it already changed someone's life. Shout out to you for, for changing lives with your Thank podcast. You. That's awesome. Thank you. And it's just, you know, I, I, now that I've made it to a year or almost to the year line anyway, as we're recording this, it's like, okay, I've, I've done a year now. And, and you kind of like, I, I kept it going all through that time. Cause I didn't know when I started it, how, how committed I, I know how committed I thought I was going to be, yeah. but I didn't know how committed I was going to be able to be. You know, it's just like, yeah, I'm going to do this it's because as soon that you know what it's like when you're putting out content, you like the first ones and you've got this big idea, I'm going to put out content. But then when you start and you realize that you have to keep it consistent and what, what it takes to harvest all of that and keep it moving, it's, you know, once you've started, you've got to keep feeding it and you've got to keep feeding it yeah. with, qual- with quality as well. It yeah, but you don't have any other choice. That's what you do. I've painted myself in a corner where I don't have any other choice but to, um, it's like something has to stick because I'm not going back to surface level life. Mm. I mean, I think you've already found it. It's being you. That's why it's so hard because it's, I think you, I think you've crossed that threshold, honestly, my love, where you realize you can't go back. No. <laughs> so no matter what it is you're doing, whether it's singing, whether it's the podcast, you know, you start your yoga, it's right, whatever it is. You can't go back mm. to what you were before. And that's what I think produces results. Mm. And that's what this year has been about. That this, I'd say that's what this year has been about for sure. Is like I've been trying to go back to situations that I would have gone back. And it's just been like, this isn't working. And it's like blown up in my face within weeks. Where it's like, oh, so you're, you're not yet at the place where you realize there is no back. See, I'm at the place where there's no going back. That's why I be cursing my guys out. Like, where do you want me to go? Because <laughs> I can't go back. You know, the Bible says, um, what is it? Truth is like um, bitter fruit. Mm. Um, and that's why ignorance is bliss. People don't realize that. Or, or that phrase, uh, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Mm-hmm. You know, I have people, oh my God, I wish it was like you. I wish you could chant. I wish you could. Girl, no, you know. You know, it's, it's. I compare it to like someone coming out of the closet of being transgender. It's it, there's a lot of responsibility in walking the path less traveled mm. to yourself, not just to the people that are um, looking at you and being like, "Oh my God, that's inspiring me," because that's cool too, you know. But but to yourself, because you walk in that path by yourself, and that can be scary or lonely because you're the one mad. It. You're not following a mess. See, everyone else is getting up and following a program that has been set for for the past couple hundred years. And everyone that's going left, whether that's you being an entrepreneur, whether that's you pursuing your creativeness, whether that's you pursuing spirituality, whether that's you going vegan, whatever. But if you're going the path less traveled in your own unique way, that's why it's going to feel so scary. Because you're mapping that path. You're exploring something that's this new territory, mm. you know? Because everybody else is like, just conform. It's easier. Check is there. You just show up. You don't got to do nothing but just show up and follow and comply. Mm. It's not worth it to me. It sounds I'm like right pain. I, it, it would be a waste. I, I don't know. It, it sounds like the most painful existence ever. For me, it would be painful to try and do that. So remember that. I want you to remember this conversation and remember that when you find yourself, or like when I find myself or anybody listening, finds themselves 
breaking down on the road that they're walking on with that loud, silent cry. <laughs> you know, knowing that you done walked down this road way too far to turn back. <laughs> but you're still scared about what's ahead because you don't see nothing in sight that matches why you even went down the road. <laughs> you just have to remember that it's, it's, it's with purpose and it's with a reason. Mm. And, you know, again, that, wow, this is an image that my guys just gave me as a conscious creator. You can stop along that path and and find things and pick up things that help you. You can um, accumulate new skills on that path that maybe you didn't realize because now you're on this path and you're, you know, I I can build websites now. I can, I mean, I literally just started a whole other business in like 30 days because I had the experience of of building up one ancient soul for the past eight years. And I was able to just do it like that. Mm. It's not easy. I'm not trying to make it sound like it's easy, but it was a lot more easier this time around because I have failed and tried and failed and tried like 50 websites. By this point, I could probably get paid to build somebody's website because I've I've had to build my own websites from scratch so Mm. many times. So we don't realize that when I was telling you that when you're pushing this mountain or you're doing something that feels so hard to you and your own perspective, it feels like nothing's changed, nothing. But then when you look back and you realize like, well, I've actually really evolved. I've really grown. I've really, you know, like with you with editing, I'm sure you didn't even realize like as a singer, you probably were just on the other end. And now as a podcast creator and a content creator, it, you know, it's like, okay. You probably produce your own album from the, the whole thing by yourself at this point, with the skills that you've learned, you know? So you we learn. We learn. Even though we don't realize the value in that, it's valuable. Our paths are valuable, your truth is valuable. And I I just again I just want to say to anybody listening, because I know we're all going through this. I know all of you listening are nodding your head and like feeling, you know, everything we're talking about. Don't give up on the seeds that God has given you, even though you may feel like you don't have any fertile land around you, Mm. or you just planted the seed and then somebody came and uprooted it. Or I know that it's difficult, but I hope that you can understand and see that it's for a reason that we're living during this time. And it's for a reason that you feel so compelled to do things differently, Mm. even though it's hard. Do you know what came to my mind as well? And, and it's, I've, I've got this little playlist on Spotify, which is my, mm. my galvanization, you know, and it's got all different, got mainly gospel tunes where it's just going to lift you up from, from wherever you're feeling. But there's one tune by Mary Mary do this version. I think it's a, um, the chorus of it is, I just can't give up now. Come too far from where I've started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. And I can't believe he brought me this far to leave me. That's exactly how I be feeling. That was the that's the exact feeling when I cursed my guys out and got out. Because it's like, yo, I mean, I uh, what's up? Mm. I, we came this far. You just gonna leave me to the matrix? <laughs> you leave me to the IRS? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but it's like, you know, yeah. But in those moments when you break down, if you are open to receive, mm. see, that's the thing. Sometimes you gotta be willing to understand you may hear in prayer something you don't want to hear you may hear in prayer the response of being accountable for your own actions you know and that's the responsibility of listening to your guides see a lot of people think that they don't hear their guides no you just don't like what they're saying you don't you don't want to listen you don't want to see what they're talking about because it it doesn't match your own opinion but if your opinion was doing so good you would be where you wanted to be you wouldn't be asking for their advice Mm-hmm. And I had to really, I had to really respect the fact that they, they, what they said to me, it's like, you, you a psychic medium and you telling me you can't sink into the frequency of, of happiness. You sink it into a frequency that that's deemed impossible. And that's when it was like, it's me, it's me and my choices. It's me and my belief systems. It's me. And my programming, it's me and my trauma that I've never dealt with. It's me and my anger. It's not the universe punishing me. It's me punishing me. It's me not giving me time to heal. It's me not forgiving myself. It's me being angry at other people for being people. 
that, and that was just some real shit that they told me. And when I when I started working on that and I started seeing immediately changes, but I, but I will be honest, I reverted back to a lot of things because that's the law of hypnotic rhythm. I was raised in order to change your whole life and your whole programming completely. It's going to take time because you are again your mind. At this point, if you're an adult, I'm an adult. I'll be 35. My mind thinks it's working for me when it's reverting me back to habits that I no longer want, whether that's me overeating because my mind thinks like, no, but you, this makes you feel better. Now it used to make me feel better when I was ignorant. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But my mind, my mind had did it so registered that I did it so much, right? The law of hypnotic rhythm that it, no, it's going to refer this file to me when I feel bad because it, it, that's what it's, it was trained to do. I trained my mind. It's almost like right now my mind works against me, but it thinks it's working for me mm. because it's working for the older version of me that I'm shedding. So I have to get my mind reprogrammed to our souls because our souls are now becoming louder. Our souls are saying, no, I don't want this. Got to get your mind on board because your mind is the quantum computer. Your mind is the one sending out the program into the universe. And that's how it's bending. I, I can't stress that enough. So that's why I want people, and even myself, I'm channeling this even to me, to forgive yourself when you see you're reverting back to habits or behaviors or old patterns or old boyfriends or old jobs or old things you don't want to do. Your mind thinks it's, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And in order to reprogram your mind, you can't just tell it one time, no, I don't want that no more. No, you have to actually change the code. We were not raised on how to do that. No one was even raised to believe in quantum physics or spirituality. So that's why it's, in order for all of us to truly change and see noticeable change, we have to reprogram our mind. And you cannot reprogram your mind until you look at the code, which means you deal with the shadow. Because that's a part of the code. The things that tick you off, the things that make you sad, the trauma, all of that shit. Because everything everyone is doing right now is based off of their past. You ever notice in movies with amnesia, the person ends up becoming like a whole nother person? They're a whole different person. Mm. It's not because they're a whole different person. It's because their memories no longer dictate to them who they are. They don't have their, their mind is not giving them that constant file. The file was wiped clean. You can put new files in. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like you need to wipe your brain. You can't give your brain amnesia if you're conscious, but you can by one by one take a file, read it, and be like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and rewrite that file. That goes into the trauma. That goes. So if, I, if I'm still triggered by the fact that my dad was married to another woman and I found out, and when I found out, he just disappeared on me, that's still a trigger for me. Then that means then I'm, that file's, still needs to be rewritten. I could say that I'm okay about it. I know I'm not okay about it. That means that that's pain still inside, triggering me when I date, trust. It's a domino effect. But if I woke up with amnesia without me remembering the stuff with my father or the issues with guys or the bullying, I would probably be the most happiest person on earth if I didn't remember my trauma. Mm. all of us would be this is why our memories are wiped clean every time we reincarnate so that we have an opportunity to try again but see that's the thing about muscle memory it's soul memory we're repeating things over and over because you can't just continue to wipe things away you have to start dealing with them you gotta start dealing with them mm. and not only dealing with them but rewriting it really forgiving, really saying a different version of the story. Maybe, you know, maybe my father didn't do that to me. He did it to himself because he was a broken human, you know, stuff like that. So that's manifesting, being a conscious creator, changing your life, changing your jobs, whatever. You got to realize it's your mind, man. If your mind is not on board, it don't matter if your soul is on board, you got to get your mind on board. Sure. That's what I've learned this summer <laughs> <laughs> from my guys. Thank you. Let me yeah. find out if these things have changed for you as well. If over the, <laughs> over the past year, have you received any new advice? What would be the best piece of advice a woman's given you over the past year or anyone, if it's not a woman in particular? Just keep going. Mm -hmm. You only fail when you stop trying. 
You know, that's that's something that sticks with me because I be wanting to stop. I be wanting to fail. I just want to say F it. But it's like, I know because <laughs> I know the irony of life is, let's say, you know, I, I just quit everything and I'm like, forget it. And then one day I die and I go through my soul review and my guys will show me like, this is what would have happened if you got going. <laughs> just FYI. So, you know, it's like, I know it's hard yeah. when you're not seeing what you want, but one thing I know statistically and scientifically, you're definitely going to see something if you keep going. Yeah. And if that's not working, change, change your route. If you're going down a road that doesn't work, try a different road, cut through the forest, try a different way, swim through the water, just keep going mm-hmm. because you can't go back. I mean, you can, but that would be pointless because you came all this way. The, um, the keep going is, is partly just, sheer curiosity I'm like okay I'm just going to keep going I'm going to see where it ends up because if I do like you say the the road travel by everybody kind of know how that's going to pan out because I just see it played out in so many different lives if I'm doing this and I'm doing something different and I don't stop doing something different it will be interesting to see where it where it ends up what the destination brings because I can't map it <laughs> yeah, but you gotta imagine you're at this point on the journey though for most of us and most people and even you at times you're starving you're hungry your feet are blistered so you know you, you're not gonna want to hear just keep going but <laughs> because it's like you're tired see that's why you have to just keep going because the truth is it's, it's not even about going backwards most of us just want to stop mm. want to stop and, and maybe indulge in our addictions Right. We want to stop and maybe kill ourselves. We want to stop and maybe, again, um, revert to behavior that just is like fucking mode. Right. We want to stop and maybe just troll other people because, my God, I just I don't care. I'm just going to say my opinion. Mm-hmm. Just keep going isn't even about going backwards. It's about it's about don't don't stand still. If you know you're not where you want to be mm-hmm. as tired as you are, even if you don't even see it anywhere close to where you want to be. Because if you stop, you're definitely not going to get there. It's not even about going back. It's it's a it's and I and I hate I'm channeling this because it's it's even to me because you be tired. You want to stop. You want to stop. A lot of us just want to stop. It's like why? Look, nothing's happening. Nothing's changed. What? So we're you're battling the outside elements while you have this inner voice that's that's like you, you just gotta trust. You just gotta trust. But that is the best advice I've gotten because. If I succeeded with my suicide, I know that at 13, I would have never, I would have never known these things about me. Life is still pretty hard. But I would have never had conversations with you that I know have been life changing, for me at least, people we know, or other people. So it's, it's, we, we can't, we have to understand that we're, even though you may not be doing what you want to do or what you think you're supposed to do, you're doing something that's a part of the bigger collective that's, that's needed. Who, which woman or which man, because we can see the, the her energy arising in the male as well, do you feel is really representing higher energetic resonance? I'm going to go with Cardi B. <laughs> do you know I'm what? I'm, I'm there. Listen, I'm, I'm the biggest Cardi B fan because... She, she's been, she's been real with a capital R, like realer than anyone else, and she's calling some shit out. That's why she resonates to me with her because it's not about everybody thinks spirituality is supposed to have a look. I, I posted a meme where it said, "You don't, you don't act like a healer," and then the next line was, "Well, uh, God isn't looking for actors." Mm. You know, she is all the way flawed, and she embraces. Her shadow. She um, doesn't claim to be anything but who she is. And she's bullied for it. She's mm. bullied for it. And I I relate to her. And because I, I feel like that's that's my life. That's me. I've always, I mean, I've, I've, I've always been bullied for being myself. Who do you think you are? And I'm like, I'm just being me. Why does that make people so angry? But it makes people angry because people don't know how to be themselves. So when they see someone else being themselves, that's clearly flawed, but God is blessing them, it angers them. 
And that's why I love her so much because she is winning at life. She's going through problems. She's flawed. But this woman has experienced the full miracle in the past two years. She's a living miracle. Mm. She has a child. She has a husband. She has a career. She has millions of dollars. She can take care of her family. She got her problems, but she made it by being herself and being um, authentic and speaking her truth mm. and not hiding her truth. And I, I, I would love to be able to be as, as, because I live in fear of that. That's one of my biggest fears is of, of showing myself. And, and I have so many insecurities and, I, and then with empathy. I mean, I just, I'm just an anxious ball. And I just love that about her. She inspires me not to be her personality, but to know that you can be yourself because God loves you. Higher source, energy, whatever you believe in. But, you know, the divine. So Cardi B, I love Cardi B. She's Cinderella kidding me she is winning she is winning. and she she gives me like she can one little one little 10 minute 10 second snatch of her can actually like switch my mood you know and recently she, when she was out in milan and paris mm-hmm. and she was just cutting up the fashion there it was just like you know, Fair and because, what did everybody say because of the Nicki minaj thing or you ruin your career you'll yeah. never be invited back oh God has another plan. I buy with her because that's how I feel like it's happened to me. I've had people tell me my whole life, I'm, I'm not going to succeed being myself. Oh, you, you going to be a psychic? Oh, good luck with that. Oh, you tattooing your arms, you'll never get a job. Oh, you, you think you know it all. And then like two years later, they're purchasing a reading. Like, it's just, if you allow yourself to be yourself, you will see God work in your life or the universe bend. Look at it as a quantum physics thing. The universe will bend Mm -hmm. to you because like you said, I don't know if this was on air or off, but what is it about the revolving thing? I can't say how you said it. um, Uh, Like you're the center of the universe. Right. Because you are though, like you said, because everybody you're revolving around me the same way I'm revolving around you because we are individually our own sons. We, we have a heart. That's our son. That's our life. And everything I do is like the planets that revolve around the sun. Everything. So yeah, she's just, and she's a, and she's feminine. You know, um, again, I'm not the most feminine person, but I, I love how she's feminine, but also like masculine. But you know what I'm saying? I just, I vibrate with her. I vibe, and I'm from New York. I just vibe with her. And as someone that was bullied, and seeing how much she's bullied. Just for being herself, it makes me rock with her even harder Mm. because it just shows how much demons or darkness really get irritated at light. It just irritates them, fully irritates them. She don't be messing with nobody. She just live her own life and people literally come to her pace and harass and bully her. You ignorant, you ghetto, you was a stripper. So what? But God loves me. You mad? You so mad God loves me. They be mad. They really be mad. You know, and I, I get it. I dig it. I, I, I know it. I, the only thing I'm missing is my millions. Then my baby and my husband. I don't want the baby and my husband. I just want the millions. <laughs> so yeah, she's my little spirit. She's my, she's my uh, spirit. I love her. I love her. Yeah. 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 And, and she's just got, and also she's got a gift in that she's got comic timing. And not everyone has that. Even some, even some people who work as comics don't have the timing that she's got. It's flawless. Yeah. So it's not done for her. You know, when, she's, when she wants to step out from the music, when she goes on to, she'll be on film. She'll be, she, her personality is too multifaceted. Oh, yeah. That's, that's moving in her life. It don't matter what human beings. I had an ex-best friend this summer tell me, um, nobody likes you. You know, and um, yeah, but she, I mean, it's true. Like in my personal life, like everybody that I grew up with, everybody I went to school with, they don't like this version of me because they think that this is a version of me. They, they don't realize who they knew was actually, the version. A version. right. They, this is actually who I am, but it, it, it's kind of like what Cardi B is going through. It, it unnerves people mm. when they see that God is moving through your life in ways that they feel like, why you? Mm-hmm. And it's like, um. 
I don't know, you know, take that for God. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't, I wish people, I wish people wouldn't get so angry at others for being themselves and just start to be themselves. But it's that journey that you have to make and step away and, and put up with isolation and self-inquiry that's difficult that most people aren't prepared to do, you know, so. Well, you've had it, right? You, when you started singing, you first have people that support you, right? You have your, your friends and family are all for it. Oh, wow, that's amazing. That's great. But then when this is like your lifestyle, this is not like some hobby or something that you try. This is like my life. Mm-hmm. And whether that's you tra- traveling to do it or you you start noticing people's vibrations change towards you like, oh, you still do that? Or, yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, this is what I do. Like, you, you know what I mean? And it's like, because they haven't found their, their, their thing. And they don't even realize you're struggling. You, you questioning God, you, but because you, that's how you said it to me. You look so confident. None of us are confident. We're just doing what God, what was in our heart. Mm. That's all everybody, if everybody just gave themselves permission to plant their own seeds, they would, they wouldn't be so mad at other people that do, but that's the society we're in. The society we're in tells you, you can't plant your seeds. You're better off planting my seeds because I've been planting my seeds for the past couple hundreds of years. It's their fear talking to people. The people that troll Cardi, it's their fear. It's their fear of change. It's their fear of the person that they like now having competition. It's just fear. Everybody or most people are operating from a place of fear. And then you have people that are operating from a place of faith. Mm-hmm. Not because they think that they're everything, but because they're not operating from fear. Fear doesn't grow shit. Me standing in fear is going to have me kill myself. I need to come up with a new business. I need to come up with a new destiny. I, you get what I'm saying? It's like you got people that are like at fear. And those are those are the ones that um that people just, they, they think are special. They're not special. We're, I'm not special. I'm a human being. You cut me, I'm going to bleed. You cut Cardi, she going to bleed. It's just, you know, it's something inside of your heart that says, I don't, I don't want to do it the way everybody else is doing it. And that's why she represents uh, higher energetic, energetic resonance. Mm-hmm. She does. I'll give her that. I'll give it. I'll pin the badge on on her jacket myself. <laughs> I'm for you, Cardi. And um, so, what's your favorite self care ritual practice? How are you getting on with your health? Because I know that you were talking about that a little bit earlier this year. How are you doing? Yeah, man, I got high blood. I'm, I'm, I can, I can stroke and have a heart attack any minute. I, my high blood pressure, my blood pressure is just like out of, out of the world. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I, I partake in medical marijuana, uh, which is legal in the in Nevada, which is where I live. <laughs> That's why that has been my go-to um, peace of mind. If I'm, if I'm being honest, I want to. Oh man, but my soul is a vegan yogi, barefoot walking nomad guru, man. My my soul is like a mix is just let's just do it. <laughs> um but again, my human struggles. So that's why I'm taking time from pushing everybody else to be their best selves to, to try to catch me up because my body is not in alignment with my mind and my mind is not in alignment with my soul. And if those three things aren't aligned, I'm going to be like three different people, mm. you know? So the type of healthcare regimens I want to have, but be honest, I don't do, but that is honestly because I've, I, I, I've given all that energy to other people. No one asked me to, I'm just saying that's what happened. So I don't, my favorite thing right now is just to partake in medical marijuana, but I'm looking forward to, yoga uh, because I used to practice that daily and I'm looking forward to getting back into an alkaline way of eating because that was something I mean I was I was a vegan for like a good year and I so and 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 it wasn't about other people is for what my body needs and what my body is asking for obviously the animals too because I talk to animals and it's just like that's a whole nother psychological thing but but honestly it's more from a place of the living organism that is my body it 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 doesn't want the GMO foods Mm -hmm. Uh, but I put the GMO foods in because of the law of hypnotic rhythm. It's just habit, 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 habit. habit. So I, I, I got to break the habit and I can't, um, you know, so yeah, just, just, I would say, uh, weed, but slash, hopefully once I get in the groove of it, you know, 
um, healthy eating and, and mindful movements. I, I like to pull a card for myself. Um, I like to pull a card for myself and meditate. I also like to, and the cards that I use are very high vibrational cards. So these are not like tarot cards. Um, again, Alana Fairchild, you guys look her up. Her, she's, if you want to work with the Oracle deck just for you, not from a place of readings, but just from a place of God, I'm having a bad day and pull a card mm. or you know, I need to understand something. It's completely accurate channeled wisdom. Um, but shamanic, shamanic techniques for me, I've been studying shamanism for a year now on my own. And um, if you get the first ascension, ascension box, I'm going to be including, like I said, a book that changed my life. This book, there are people that pay thousands of dollars to learn shamanic techniques, and they're all in this book. And I really have been doing a lot of visual meditations um, and soul journeying into myself. And that's been really great. I watch a lot of past live um, uh, hypnosis sessions from Alba Wyman. I would recommend anybody to look up Alba Wyman and watch her videos. You got, you got me onto her as well. So, and, and also there was a woman who was on her, who was on there that came onto her because I, I kind of, I really resonated with her whole thing. So yeah, I, I like Alba Wyman as well. It was your recommendation that got me to her. Her videos are very validating for me. When I, the things that come through her sessions are the things my guides talk to me about on a like daily basis. And it's very reassuring and comforting to hear them through someone else's mouth Yeah, on that type of level, because th- this is like about aliens and I mean, just um, soul traps and, and what's going on here and new earth and just things that are like, I don't, it would be hard for me to validate <laughs> from anyone. So it keeps me going. Mm. Again, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody that just like, I, I wanted to stop since I was 13. That was a real thing that I, you know, that was, that was for real. It just didn't work. So I always want to stop truth be told, but there, but, but the miracles that I see when guides and angels and the universe, God, helpers, ancestors, they do so much to try to get information to us to let us know, hey, things are going on behind the scenes. Hey, we know. Hey, just keep going. You know, even though I don't see it in the physical all the time change, they get these messages through, like with the, the license plates that I saw earlier. And, and that, it sounds crazy, but those are the things that keep me going. It keeps me, it's like, it's like if you're in a dark desert and you see a, a flicker of light, way, 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 way far down, so far that you upset, but you can't deny the fact that you saw that flicker of light. You saw it. You know it's there. That's what her sessions do for me. It's like, okay, new earth, it's here. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like ascension. This is all with purpose. Keep going. Mm. don't let this society convince you that happiness is not attainable or that you're broken or again i mean this society man this is some next level stuff though i I would love for you to start getting into like conspiracies like i would love for you to start going a little bit further down the rabbit hole if you're into it because it's, it's a lot (laughs) <laughs> oh, I'm in, oh, I'm into it. I've got a, there's, there's, there are a couple of people that I've got, come, well, one lady that she, I'm coming up, that she does some really interesting work as well. So Alba Weinman as well as one person that I'd like to speak to in the future. I'd, mm-hmm. I'd like, I'd like to take it deeper down, you know, cause it's, it's, I mean, there's so many different levels, you know, there's like, sometimes I need to speak to someone that's all about technology and I'm looking for someone who's, who's on that so it may not feel as as deep down the rabbit hole but it has its validity in terms of moving forward but then where where my true curiosity lies is like the deeper darker and twistier it can get yeah (laughs) I'm just I'm just looking out for them because I want it to you know it could be like the x-files of the talk shows you know Let's, let's go that way maybe once a month 
Wait, mm-hmm. maybe once a month. It can, it can be the, the flip side of her, you know, yeah. again, the shadow side, because that's how you honor the divine. You have to honor both sides. Tell, tell everyone where to, to find you in terms of your, your new website. Um, yeah. it, it'll have like the, the Queen's Day Manifest will have its own, its own direction, right? Well, yeah, I already have it. It's go to queenswhomanifest.com. Um, it's pretty much there. I'm also listed on Crate Joy, a subscription box under Queens Who Manifest. And you can find me on Instagram under 1HSO. But yeah, just uh, queenswhomanifest.com. She's born. She exists. She was born on September 20th, 2011. I mean, 2018. You hear me? 2011. <laughs> It's because I was thinking of the master number eleven. I was excited because the the day I launched it, I didn't realize it was a it was a master it was a master number type of day. The the dates, so very very excited. But um, and I'm very honored and excited to be able to do this anniversary episode with you. Um, yeah, again, grateful and excited for you and and all the amazing women that you'll be talking to this year. Mm-hmm. So congratulations. And for you to you know. I can't wait to find out how India affects you. It will change your life. It will change your life. I know. And what was so interesting is I know that once I go, this is something that I know. And I wonder if this is why maybe traveling has been put off until now. Cause I'm 35, I'm 34, but I'll be 35 in March. And it's, I've known for, for a long time that once I enter 35, it's it's almost like this choice I'm making if I'm going to hold on to the to the vibration I've been up, up into the first 35 years or if I'm going to step into the vibration of who I, who I can be, who I am mm-hmm. on a lot of other levels. And I know when I go, I know when I go to India and I know when I get on that cruise ships, I, 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 I'm not going to be able to go back to life standing um still because I know I'm a nomad in my heart and I know and I and that's something that really has been pulling me and that's another reason why the boxes are seasonal because I I know ultimately I'm I I see it and I know that it's not about money I think I'm just gonna do a little bit of a nomadic lifestyle mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not gonna be able to come back into Vegas and just be here Every it day. Be so, I mean, I don't know. The only thing I know of Vegas is what what the the picture that they send out to the world. India is, you know, it's it's dirty, it's real, it's you're walking down the street, there are cows and pigs and monkeys and dogs. Or you know, the, India it, is my home, girl. You am it. I am from the ancient world. That's you, my home. You you will feel it. You'll feel it. You'll feel it when you're there. You'll you'll just know. I'm due a return trip. You'll you'll know when you're there, and it will make sense. Because I, I I remember when I was going, and why are you going to India? What you get? What's that there for you? Aren't you scared? You're a black woman going out to India on your own, and you know it's like why do you want to go and do this? It's like because it's it's like wouldn't the curiosity because it's because it's so different it's because it's so different let alone all of the things that come from there it's the fact that it's so different that I have to go and stand in there and just be amongst it I was watching um the chef table thing on Netflix where they have all these different and there was this one woman I think it was China or some it was one of those um and and I'm really bad I'm, I'm assuming it was China and she was a monk, so she'd left her family when she was probably 17 years old, lived in this monastery, shaved her head almost every other day, but cooked the most amazing vegetarian food. You know, she was curing the kimchi in the ground and everything like that. And just seeing the, and the, the thing about this um, program is it's not only just about the food, but it's the way they tell the person's story and the yes. photography of it as well. I mean, this woman, she did just did this thing where she was just um, stir frying some shiitake mushrooms. But the way that she was just stirring it in and the way she put it on the plate and everything. And then the way that they were like filming the surrounding where she lived in this monastery and the nature. I was close. I was watching it and I was close to tears. I was just like I was almost in tears crying at this thing. 
because it just got me somewhere like, am I supposed to be a monk? What is it? That was uh, that was your memories being stirred up. That's what I tell people. When you see places on TV or in books and you have that emotional connection to it, like you've been there or you need to be there or you, you know this scene or it just, it resonates deep. Mm-hmm. You've done that. You've seen that. There is an image that I have of, of, of these cities on top of the mountains that were like, not cities, monasteries, mm-hmm. I want to say, on top of mountains. Mm-hmm. with these like copper bells and that's how they all would communicate through each other is through these bells yeah and same thing shame ted mm-hmm. monks so it's just this is how society was run we were in such a spiritual society that's what they call the golden age and why i say it's returned because it was blotted out of history mm-hmm. there was so much balance on that level See, that's why everything has to happen because now we're on the other side of the coin. That's all. You know, you had spiritual balance, saw what that was like, and now it's like carnal balance. You know, see what that's like. But that was a memory. That's why you felt that so deep in your soul. You know, something inside of you recognized that deeper than just Carol. Mm. We're wait, we're remembering. We're remembering. So I hope anybody out there doesn't feel crazy. I know you can feel schizophrenic or bipolar. You're channeling half the time. You're absorbing other people's energy half the time. Your your other dimensions and versions of you are trying to merge with you to help advance you. I mean, there's like a lot going on. (laughs) Just just hold on, journal it out, you know, speak your truth, release people in your life that, that are holding you and anchoring you to parts of you that you know don't serve you. Know that that's okay. You know, get to know new people. Don't be mean. Don't be a trolley. There's enough of that. <laughs> just keep shining. That's that's always my message. Like, just know that you are divine. And don't let anybody dim your light. Alexis, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For coming on. So good. It's so good to catch up and just hear where you're at as well. And look after yourself, you know. Stay well. We need you. Thank you, my love. I appreciate that. My guides needed me to hear that, I'm sure. This conversation needed to be, I needed to say this out loud to somebody. Mm-hmm. I, I needed to get out of it because this has been in my own head. So thank you for giving me a platform to, to share my truth. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate and that. you too. Even that just one little thing that you said about it's a memory, you know, it's like, it had such an effect on me. I couldn't even work it out. It's like, why am I like tearing up over this thing? You miss it. You miss home. You miss peace. Yeah. Mm. Miss balance. Yeah. Everybody knows this is not, they, they told you this is life, but all of us that have been here more than once know, this nah, ain't it. This ain't it. Cause I've experienced other ways. Mm-hmm. This ain't it chief. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you remember. You remember something better thanks again to Alexis for joining me on this episode of Her Conversations and thank you for listening. You can discover more about me and the Her Project by visiting my website carolmaywittick.com and if you sign up for my weekly newsletter you'll receive information about any offerings from previous guests of Her Conversations and also specially curated content from me. On social media you can find me on Facebook under Carol May Wittick, and my Instagram and Twitter handle is Kazmik. C-A-Z-M-I-C-K I'd also greatly appreciate you leaving a comment, liking and sharing any episodes and if you subscribe you'll be notified as soon as an episode is published. Thank you again and until the next episode take care, bye.